Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel, the place for coaches, course creators and consultants to find out more about how to market your business online and turn your followers into customers. Today I want to talk about something a little bit different. I'm usually a big advocate for your organic marketing strategy and I tend to talk all things social media, email marketing and what you can do to do the best when it comes to strategy organically. But there's a whole different world out there when it comes to paid for advertising options online to expand your reach and to actually get more customers from people who maybe weren't followers before, they've never heard of you. I'm gonna be sharing with you my top five tips and I will preface this by saying I am not an ads expert. I know enough to get around, I can deliver some really strong campaigns, but even the members of my team are actually more qualified than I am when it comes to advertising and there are some people watching this I'm sure who are absolute experts when it comes to advertising so do let me off the hook if anything sounds a little bit basic it's because it is these tips are supposed to be aimed at people who are just getting started so if you're watching this looking for tips on how to take a campaign that's already doing well to even bigger heights this probably isn't a video for you if on the other hand you're somebody watching this thinking how do I even get started with setting up a campaign, this is for you. So firstly I just want to explain what I mean when I say paid ads. What I'm basically referring to is either Facebook advertising, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, a social media sort of advertising platform or something along the lines of Google ads. It's basically an option for you to outline an audience that you want to target upload some content that you want them to see and put money behind it to make your content get to them. Sometimes when I refer to ads people think I mean the individual posts on social media and that's not what I'm referring to in this case. I mean quite si simply when you put budget behind a particular post. So my first tip is to consider why you're looking at ads and what they're useful for. So if you are thinking about moving forward with ads I want you to remember that organic strategy will always come first it's highly unlikely that you'll be able to put out ads and build a sustainable business on just an ad centric presence. You're going to need first a strong organic strategy. And if you are looking for more details on how to do that, I've got tons of videos. I have lots of resources on my website and you can even book in a call with me if you are looking for a chat to find out more about your strategy. I'll leave a link in the description box if you're looking to book a call and, and actually hear and brainstorm some ideas on how to move forward with that. But the reason I mention this and the reason why it's a tip is because paid is always just going to be, I kind of describe it as the foot on the gas element of your social media campaigns. It is not and will not become your sole strategy. So it is going to be the best for people who've already done the groundwork when it comes to your organic marketing campaigns and strategies. So really do think about why you're considering ads and if the answer is because your social media platform is brand spanking new and you've just got started and you've got four, five, six posts on there that aren't getting very much traction, the answer is not ads. The answer is to keep doing what you're doing and grow a little bit of momentum and to grow a strong strategy first. My second tip is around retargeting. This is a phrase that we use in marketing, it's sometimes called remarketing, which is about re targeting ironically about re-engaging people who have maybe been on your page on a particular website address or who have connected with you in some way previously so quite often this is the most effective way to market through digital ads if there is somebody who maybe has been on your website within the last 60 days and you can see that from your Facebook pixel or a Google tag then you can actually send an ad out to specifically those people who have been on your accounts rather than just anyone and brand new people who don't know who you are. And the benefit of this is it helps people not to forget you. It can take so many touch points to actually turn somebody into a customer. Usually this is the most effective way of running digital ads because you are kind of helping people to remember you. And I don't know if you're anything like me, but sometimes it'll be 
like one o'clock in the morning and I'll think of something that I really need to do or something that I really want to buy and I'll go and look it up and then I'll kind of fall asleep and forget about it. Retargeting is exactly for people like me where I'll then get an ad a couple of days later that might prompt me to do it in, in the harsh light of day. It'll be a reasonable time to be shopping. Or it could be something simple like maybe someone's researching digital marketing agencies to work with and we can send ads to them to prompt them to work with us instead of a competitor. Remember that people aren't just gonna find your account once and then hit buy. Retargeting is a nice way of being able to prompt another touch point when you choose to. Another thing that you can do on your ads that's really, really beneficial is something called a lookalike ad. So if you have um, an audience that you've already built, if you've got a mail list, a customer list that you can use as a framework, what you can actually do is use their email addresses, their, your data that you've got on them, and upload that to Facebook, to LinkedIn, whichever platform you prefer. And they'll basically find that account and look for people that are similar to that, that person. So although you can set out an audience when you're creating your digital ads and you can say people who are interested in entrepreneurship, people are interested in self-development, this actually helps to find the little things, maybe they all follow a similar account and it'll really help to identify how these lookalike audiences perform on any given platform and that's super beneficial for you as an ad runner that you can find out the common threads between your customers and make targeted decisions on new people and the biggest benefit is you don't have to do any of it the platforms themselves will actually figure out what the comparisons are and build out your lookalike audience for you based on the data that you input. Obviously the downside to this is you have to have the data in the first place um, and if you're just getting started with your business that, that might be something that you're lacking. Moving on to my next top tip that is to A, B test everything. If you're not familiar, A-B testing basically refers to using two different content pieces and sending them out to a smaller percentage to see which one performs the best. So to explain this a little bit more practically, what would happen is you would, for example, have a Facebook ad with two different images, let's say, and when you are A-B testing, what will happen is before Facebook sends out the ad to everyone, it will show a small percentage of the potential users, two different versions, one with each picture. And whichever one is the most successful, whichever one gets the most clicks or the most comments, they all then use that as sort of the winner and send that out to the rest of the users that fit your outlined audience. This is so good because you're not then just looking at what you think people are gonna like, but you're actually getting them to almost vote by their actions and by what they do. So I would highly recommend if you're setting up any kind of campaign that you should always, that you should always be A-B testing as well. And my final tip is to not limit yourself to Facebook. I've been talking a lot in my examples about Facebook ads because that is probably the biggest PPC ad system that's used, especially in social media, but it's not the only one. <laughs> I have actually seen a lot of success on LinkedIn ads on behalf of my clients. And now there are some really, really great things coming out about TikTok ads. So make sure that you think about where your ideal customer actually resides, where they tend to be active and use that platform to target them efficiently. I will say though, when I'm saying this, you might be concerned about kind of your budget and trying to split things over every single platform. I do think that it's important to focus on one platform at a given time or be able to really allocate a a decent budget to a few different places if you want to do it on multiples. So maybe it's that for the first three months you're going to focus on Facebook ads, then move over to LinkedIn ads and then TikTok ads and kind of review which ones have been the most successful. And that might be a better way to approach it if you don't have lots and lots of budget to put into different ad options. And with that in mind, I just want to finish off today's video with a little preface about what I think you should spend in your budgets. If you're just getting started with your business, you don't need to be doing ads and developing those to, to be successful. So I will say 
be sensible with your budgets. Your total marketing spend should be roughly 10% of your revenue. So that doesn't mean that you should put 10% into ads, but that you make investment when it comes to marketing. So that could be photographers, that could be on um, different expertise. It could be working with someone like me, I counted in that 10%. Um, but if you are gonna consider ads, that is something to bear in mind and think about what you're already spending when it comes to marketing and add in gaps. So say you're spending roughly 8% of your revenue on your marketing right now, you can add in an extra 2% that will kind of dictate what you're gonna be spending. And another piece of advice for you, if you are somebody who is currently using the Boost feature on uh, Facebook specifically, then please, please, please stop. It's known as in the industry, Facebook's moneymaker. It doesn't really tend to garner the best results and there is a lot more that you can do with Ads Manager and some of the more complicated Facebook tools when it comes to advertising. So that kind of leads me to the end of today's video. I wanna say thank you so much for watching and I hope that those tips have been handy. I understand that this is quite a technical subject. So if some of this has gone over your head, please don't be alarmed. This is some of the more complicated bits. Once you've got your basic organics up and running, this is the next step. So do feel free to reach out if you need any support. And I got somebody here who wants to say goodbye. She's been sat on my lap, kind of huffing and puffing. So if at any point you've heard weird noises through the video, it's, it's this one. Say hello. No luck. Any case, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.